Today I want to show another vulnerable VM called SIGOS. Uh, the special thing about this VM is that the creator states that this VM is similar to the OSCP experience. So everybody uh, who plans to do the OSCP well, should get through this VM. Alright, so the first thing I did here is um, check my IP address which is uh, 172.16.0.50 and then do a uh, nmap scan. I knew already that the uh, vulnerable VM has the IP 51 so um, we just skip the uh, network scan, usually you do that before and then we do a simple nmap scan and check which ports are open <clears throat> and we can see that the open ports are 22 for SSH, 3128 for the squid proxy and 8080 for the proxy as well. So the next thing we do is uh, open the browser and try to browse to the IP itself on port 3128. And we can see that we get a, a error and the icon looks like squid so we can pre can be pretty sure that we're dealing with the squid here then we use the squid proxy as proxy by the way the tool i'm using here the add-on is add -on for firefox uh, called proxy switcher it just makes it easier to switch around proxies uh, on the fly instead of going to settings, network settings uh, all the time and after that we just try to browse to the IP on port 80 so a simple HTTP request and as we can see we get a simple message so we know there's something there the next thing I wanted to do is uh, check with the tool nick tool Kind of if we can find any vulnerabilities. So Nikto itself is very easy to run. You just type in Nikto minus H for the host. So in this case HTTP uh, 172.16.0.5.1 and because we want we know we need to use a proxy we uh, gave it parameter a parameter use proxy HTTP and then the IP And then we just wait for Nick2 to finish. <clears throat> and we can see there are some possible vulnerabilities. Something that looks interesting is the shell shock vulnerability. So that's where we want to start. So um, shell shock itself yeah, is quite easy to uh, exploit. Usually, um, what I did is uh, download a simple test script uh, from the internet. So this is not my script, but um, as you can see, it's not that complicated. Uh, basically what it does is uh, it tests the host which you put in and if the host is vulnerable it will, uh, you will see the word vulnerable in the downloaded file. So what I what I did here is I simply run the script shellshock test what I call it uh, to see uh, if the host is vulnerable and we get a file status 
and if we open that file we can see uh, the word vulnerable so it means we can run our own stuff on the host so the next file I have is the file called shellshock um, I called it O shell like open shell and if you look at the script itself it's very simple so basically the only thing you have to edit is the host address of course and what I did here is I put in my IP with the port 5555 and the target URL is uh, a local host for the proxy itself and then the folder cgi minus bin slash status and we want to use a proxy as well and then put in the HTTP proxy with the IP of the script proxy. What you need to do now is start a netcat listener on on your host on port 5555 and then run the script. After running the script, we can see uh, we're logged in as www minus data at SIGOS. If we put in a simple who am I, we can see that we that the user indeed is www minus data. So now we're logged in and we have a show <coughs> on the on the vulnerable VM. But the user www minus data is the user used to run Apache. And usually we only have access to the folder slash uh, var slash www. So now we try to escalate our privileges and do that we check the uh, root folder of Apache first as we can see there are some files in there Apache 2 connect uh, Python connect to Python which is which is one I created I will get to that later index.php robot takes bitconf and wolf CMS which is a folder so we get into the folder wolf CMS and as we can see there's a file config.php and if we open that file we can see some mysql login data and as you can see the password for the root mysql user is john at one two three and what we do now is we simply open another tab and try to log in as root and use that password as you can see that doesn't work So next thing we do is uh, print out the content of the file etc slash password which shows us all the users on the system and as you can see we have root and all the other services or the, the service users and there's another user in there sickos so we go back to SSH and try to log in with the user SIGORS and use the same password we tried before, which is John at one two three.
and bam, we log in. Then what we can try now is just to change the root with sudo minus i and that's it. We got our root shell here. So this VM is uh, basically done. Another thing I wanted to mention is um, what I show here now uh, took me in total probably like a full day or so because I was looking at the wrong things for way too long. So if this if this VM would have been a OSCP VM, I probably would have failed the exam already because I would have wasted all my time on uh, things that wouldn't even work. As I mentioned before, the file connect2.python is something I created because um, I was looking around for other ways to escalate the, my privileges. So, um, one thing I like to do when you have a shell uh, is to check for jobs, from jobs on the system. For example, if you go to the folder etc slash cron d, you see there are you see there are uh, two files in there: automate and PHP five. The inter interesting thing now is if you uh, print out uh, out uh, print out the content of automate, you see that automate is uh, basically running every minute. The Python file located in var slash www connect dot python. So uh, that means that even with a low privileged user like the Apache user, we can edit the file connect dot python, and then technically the root user should run our connect dot python file every minute. So what we do now is uh, we overwrite the content of connect.python with import os import system and then as third line put in os.system user add test123 with the password 123456 and add that user to the sudo group. So basically what that should do is every time the file is run the user root should create a user test123 with the password 123456 and should add that user to the group users. However, that didn't work for me. The, the file itself is working fine, but however, I don't know why, um, but I was waiting for basically an hour or longer, uh, but there never, uh, the user test123 uh, never has been created. And yeah, maybe some of you know why that happened or why it didn't happen. Um, it, from my understanding, that file should run every minute, um, but it didn't. And when I later changed to root and ran it manually, it worked fine and the user test123 got created. So I don't know what's wrong here. But that basically would have been another way to escalate your privileges and uh, it's always a good idea to check the cron jobs if you can put in some scripts or anything like that. Yeah, that's uh, basically it for this VM. As we got root already, there's nothing much to do. So, uh, SIGOS VM is done.